of shows this isn't a different subject, but I, I, I think it may come back to the same thing. I'm going to talk about divorce. In divorce, by which I mean when you separate yourself from someone that you've been one with, close with, that you've come to meld into each other as regards what we value and um, what we see and what we understand. In other words, I'm really saying when you've been in love with and for long enough to have greatly affected you. And then you commit divorce. Now, I do mean commit divorce. I don't mean then you are divorced. They divorce you. If you are actually the instigator of it, you come to a point where you reject them to the extent that you are seeing them as not beneficial to you. What they are is now cost. But remember they are much of what you are. You tend to reject all of them if you're the one that's doing the rejecting because you make the person so bad in your mind that it warrants, it validates your leaving. Which means even the good parts that you have, you reject in them. You start to see a suspect. Do you see you're beginning to criticize your very self? Now, I'm not just talking about um, the disgrace, if you like, of um, no longer being loyal to. I'm talking about rejecting much of your very self in order to separate yourself from this person. When, on the other hand, you are the one that's being rejected, It's a mystery to you. I was acceptable to you and now I'm not. Oh dear. Do you see, I feel the one, I feel as though I'm the cause. It's not that I'm against what I am, but what I am is what you're rejecting. I'm not wrong, you see, because I'm not rejecting you. I'm not rejecting anything. I'm being rejected. So I keep my integrity, in a sense, you know, nothing's been, um, there's nothing about me that I'm rejecting, because there's nothing about you I'm rejecting, I just know you're rejecting me and leaving. But you, in rejecting me, are rejecting much of what yourself is as well. Can you imagine that in some sense, therefore, you leave, but leave with very little? Much less of yourself than you had when you were not inclined to leave. Now you could say, oh, I, I'm a changed person. Uh, mm -hmm, you may have changed enough to want to leave, but there's much of you great deal of you that is the same as the other person. And in order to leave you, you recognize things that you don't like in your partner. And that rejection causes you to have a rejection approach to your partner. 
you start to see everything wrong with them, much of which you've been yourself. And more, much of it which you still are, because you now see it with a critical eye in the person that you are rejecting. You're open to all the faults of even the things that you share with that person. You take the tatters of yourself that's left and try to live a complete life. You have a great repair job now to do. The things you did value, you no longer value. The things that you did value that you had accepted as part of yourself, you no longer value. You've got to fill that with something else. And you don't do it in a, a natural way of, you know, over a long period of time, where the couple come together, you see, and they they come into an agreement, a greater and greater oneness. You've got to do it fast. And in some sense artificially. And there's very little of yourself. Because there's so much of your partner that was you, that you've had to step away from and reject. In other words, you don't just leave the partner as the complete person that you were. You leave just with a little of yourself. Not a unified whole, a remnant, um, an incompleteness. And you face your new life. The one that's rejected, on the other hand, assuming they don't start to reject you because you've rejected them, they remain complete as they were. They remain as the happy completeness as a person, the values that they had when they were with you and, and, and that you loved each other. And, and, unless they've also grown to hate you. Do you see they have no adjustment to make? Only the physical absence of you. They're not having to restructure themselves. You are restructuring yourself. Having to claw in something to replace much of what you've rejected. You have a great problem on your hands. Far greater than the one you've left. I mean, you've given the one you've left difficulties of adjustment physically. I mean, you, you, you know, they, they've got less possessions now that they could share than they had before and, uh, and so forth. But they haven't got a personal identity that they've got to restructure, and you have. They will carry on the old way of life that you did have before you became alienated from each other. Now, if you became both alienated, then you both have the problem. You, the one that's left, necessarily have the problem because you had enough alienation to go. Now, I don't mean everything's wonderful for the person you've left, you see, then. And, of course, they keep with the values that you may have rejected because you see it as beginning to hold you back and, you know, if they had ways that they still got 
And if they are wrong waves, of course, they will continue towards what that implies for their future. You know, perhaps they were extremely untidy and therefore their future will be extremely untidy. You, on the other hand, will, of course, no longer be untidy because at last you can be tidy and so on. But perhaps you're not as tidy as you think. And in your new situation, you find you're untidy. You start to hate yourself because you've got the values that you reject. That is what hating yourself is about. You haven't got better values to put in its place. You're still living much the same as you were living because you're still the same person, of course. It's just that you've left. which are very critical of the way you're living yourself now. A very sad position to be in. Let me pause. Look, I'm not saying that the one doing the divorce is facing an impossible situation. I'm just saying that they have the problems. The one being divorced basically hasn't. They have the loss of you physically, but they're not against anything of themselves. Majorly. Enough to throw you out anyway. Unless they did throw you out, of course. Well, that would be a different matter. They're the one doing the divorcing in that case. You left, but not of your own free will. You left because you were forced out. Ah, oh, that's different. But the one who does the divorcing is rejecting. And they're rejecting something that's been part of themselves. The one rejected is not rejecting anything. They're just coping with the fact they're being rejected. That's what I'm getting at. The one that's rejected is not rejecting unless they respond likewise. Well, it's, it's a great temptation to do because they feel threatened. So they start to analyze closely what's wrong with you now, just as you have been analyzing what's wrong with them to the extent that you've rejected them. By rejecting, you've left, or you've thrown them out, forced them out of the relationship. Do you see? They have to cope with the fact that they're now against something that they were. And they've been doing that for some time before they actually leave, of course. As it's now come to a point where it's so rejecting that they are now rejecting you, actually. They've been more and more critical of something they're having to put up with. And disliking that part of you. That disliking tends to make them see everything about you as wrong, which starts to validate why they leave. They become highly critical of everything in you because they're critical of something in you. You know, criticism is contagious in the person doing the criticism in that it starts to spread to every other aspect they see in you, much of which, of course, is in themselves as well, of course. They see that quickly because that is what their values are. But they see it in you, and see what's wrong with it in you. And so they leave, or they separate themselves, or they throw you out. They are the instigator. And they are putting themselves in a position where they are now incomplete. For when they reflect on you, they criticize what you are, much of which is what they are still. 
and they adjust this about themselves as well because they now see the bad side of the things that they were. Do you say they've got a massive restructuring job going on? You, on the other hand, are the bewildered one that, ah, oh, they don't love me anymore. What have I done wrong? Now, if you're not careful, you start to study everything about yourself from the point of view of what's wrong with you. Ah, oh, now you become the victim. That's not good. Don't do that. Remain bewildered, yes. But not, what's wrong with me? And on the contrary, you now need encouragement and building. Reinforcing what you are. At least for a while while you get over the shock of the person going. And the dislocation that means physically in your life and financially and so forth. You need encouragement and support. Not further criticism. Not, ah, oh, this is wrong with you and you must do so and so. I must change this. I must be wrong on such and such. Perhaps that wasn't kind after all. I must do so and so instead. I must think differently. You know, I must be more accepting of people or I must be friendlier or I, I didn't do the following things. You see, you'll look around for things that you didn't do and criticize yourself for it. And you'll start to look at things of yourself and criticize yourself for it. You're going to resist that. You're better staying in the, I'm the one that was wronged. They went, they left me, or they threw me out. Or they shouldn't have done that. I love them. Why would you reject someone that loved you? Poor soul, what's happened to them? Do you see? Not a self-recrimination at all. Poor soul, what moved them from loving to not loving? Oh. Not, what did I do that caused this? But what happened to them? What changed in their life? Do you see? That they could not accommodate what they saw in me from then on. You will know that you have faults. This is not the time to find more faults. This is the time to just trust God for the situation. And uh, if you can, thank God for everything that you still have. The air you breathe, the days, perhaps your health at the moment, uh, or such finance as you do have, such possessions as you did keep. In other words, minimize the adjustment that you force upon yourself. job to do. They are restructuring great chunks of themselves because they've rejected it. Do you see? Now, to the extent that you, the innocent one, for want of a better phrase, actually reject the person that's rejected you, you will be concerned for them. Um, unless you want revenge. 
You don't necessarily want revenge. After all, you didn't want enough to leave them. You were happy with them. Happy enough not to leave them. They were not happy enough, so they left or caused you to leave, threw you out. They were the active, destructive side of the relationship in that sense. So you may well, and it's good if you can do this, choose to be helpful to them in as far as you can reasonably be without great cost to yourself. But don't do it to the extent of great cost to yourself. That is not reasonable. They have chosen to embark on a change. You have not. There's no need for you to change. You will adjust to no longer having their partnership. You will look around for solutions to the lacks that you now suffer. And there are some, no question of it. You may be very aware of it too. But it's nothing to what they're having to adjust to. So you may have some compassion for them in spite of the fact they are the instigator of the separation. But don't have so much compassion that you take on the cost of their change. That is not wise. Don't constantly modify their decision to leave you by giving them much of what they now need at great cost to yourself. Quite simply, you say to yourself, look, I'm not rejecting them and therefore I'm welcoming them back as they were. I'm not wanting them changed. I'm not helping them get a, a new view that hates me. I'm not making it lovelier for them to leave me. we were committed and we were one and it's best that we minimize this disruption as I see it and then come back to me in other words from your point of view there can be forgiveness whilst they're staying away from you despite your desire they are not forgiving Unforgiving company is not good, you know. You are better off that they are away from you. Isn't that an amazing thing? The unforgiving isolates himself to your advantage. Wow. If they were forgiving, and it would be different. It would be better if they were with you. But they are not. They are choosing to stay separate. Wow. This is an astonishing revelation to you. But don't fly in the face of it. It is not for you to be their forgiveness of you. It is for them to choose forgiveness and come back. You've left the door open. I mean, assuming you have. Because you're we're not rejecting them before. Why should you reject them now? You've not changed. It's them that's changed. In that they 
reject you as they didn't before. It is their rejection of you that you accept. That rejection is not validated by what you have wrong with you. Only to them. That's their problem, not yours. You are not rejecting them for their faults. You are abiding and living with them, not rejecting them at all. And they went. Do you see? But you say, there are some circumstances in which it's right to leave. Ah. Oh. Yes, they have, may have um, moved into a position of an addiction that is not something one can live with. It might be drugs and alcohol or so on. Um, become mentally ill, psychopathic in some way. Um, you are physically in danger of them now. They may have a more subtle problem of becoming psychopathically such that they are a harm to you psychologically. In other words, your partner may have taken on a behaviour that is extremely damaging to you. Physically, mentally, or spiritually. They may always, for instance, ridicule your religion, your God. They didn't do this once, they do now. Maybe forever telling you off, negative, criticizing you, not valuing you. They didn't used to do this, they used to love you. They may be physically violent towards you, they certainly didn't do that before. And if you did marry them in that situation, goodness, you were crazy. But then you were crazy if you married them in any of these three situations because they were spiritually, psychologically, or physically destructive towards you. But they have become so now. Well, yes, but that is their rejection of you. They may not have physically put you out but they're doing something to destroy you. This is not what things were like, and I assume you're not doing likewise to them. If you are, then in some sense you are both the cause, aren't you? Or the cause is coming through you anyway, both of you. Okay? Let me pause there.